Hey guys, my name is Scobie and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 2 games on your PC. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So before I get too far in today's video, I will mention this PS2 core we're going to be using in RetroArch is a relatively early build version. So don't expect as good performance as PCSX2. If you are looking for much better performance, I will be leaving a link in the description down below to my previous video for PCSX2. It will not work within RetroArch. It's a completely standalone emulator. However, it is in a much better state than play. But if you're looking to play something easily in RetroArch, this is currently an okay version as long as we keep our expectations realistic. So the first thing we need to do is come to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is going to be for the free emulator we're using in today's video called RetroArch. What we need to do is come here, come to the download section, and we're going to be downloading the latest stable build. For me, it's currently 1.9.0, but I'd recommend downloading whatever the version is when you're watching this video. Or if you have a specific operating system, feel free to scroll down here and download whatever version best suits you. Once RetroArch is downloaded and installed, you should be met with this UI. What we're going to be doing from here is coming to the main menu. We're going to be clicking on the load core option. And here we will see a list of all currently downloaded cores in our RetroArch. What we're going to be doing is scrolling down here until we see the download a core. If we open this up, we'll see a list of all currently available cores that you can download in RetroArch. So what we're going to be doing from this point is scrolling all the way down until you see Sony slash PlayStation 2 and then in brackets play explanation mark. This is going to be the PlayStation 2 core we're going to be using in today's video. To install this core, we simply left click or click A on our controller. Some text will appear at the bottom left and your core will be installed. You'll know it's ready to go once you see the blue hashtag here on the right hand side. From this time, we're going to be backing out of here and now we're going to be loading up the core that we just downloaded by clicking into load core again. We're then going to be selecting our PS2 core that is here. If we select it, our core will now be loaded. We'll know our core is fully loaded if we come down here to the bottom left. We can see our current RetroArch version along with Play and we can see Play is currently on the 0.3 build so it is still an early build as mentioned earlier. Now for our Play PS2 emulator, thankfully we do not need any PS2 BIOS but we still need to make some other changes to RetroArch to make it load up and be playable. What we're going to be doing is coming over here to the left menu. We're going to be coming down to settings. We're going to be selecting drivers and we're going to be scrolling down until we see the video option here. We select this open by default, it'll be selected on GL, but for the PlayStation 2 Core Play, we are going to need to set it to either GL Core, Vulkan, or D3D12, and I believe 10 and 11 also work, but I'd recommend doing either GL Core Vulkan or D3D12. Now, by default, I actually use the GL Core. I believe Vulkan will work best for NVIDIA graphics cards, but I might be wrong on this, so I'll update anything in the comments down below, or if anyone knows, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. But typically, I use the GL Core. I am running an AMD Radeon 5700 XT, and I believe GL Core works better here in comparison with Vulkan, which runs better on NVIDIA. It is also worth experimenting with these different video cores. If if one gives you better performance, another might give you worse performance and vice versa. So if a game is giving you issues, it is recommended to experiment around here, seeing what works best for different games, especially since this core is so early in development, it is something to keep in mind. So you will need to make sure you have this. And while we're talking about system specs, you will need a relatively powerful system to even think about running PS2 games, especially with this early build of play. So it is also something to keep in mind. Now that we have our settings ready, we're almost ready to load up games. And now we're ready to actually talk about games for our PS2. Now I will also mention in today's video, I'm not gonna be showing you where to download any PS2 games. Although they're really, really easy to find it quick. Google search will help you out. Or alternatively, you can also feel free to dump your existing PS2 discs. It is really easy to do. And again, a quick Google search will help you out on this as well. Now, currently I do have Jack and Daxter here in a .7 zip file. And most likely when you download your games, they will come in either a .7 zip or a .rare format. Now, sadly, we can't load these up directly inside RetroArch. So we're first going to have to extract these games out to be able to play them inside RetroArch. So to extract a WinRare or a 7-zip file, we are going to need an extra application. We're either going to need 7-zip or WinRare. Again, I'll be leaving links to both of these in the description down below. And for today's video, I'm going to be using 7-zip to extract the file we simply right click, hover over 7-zip and click extract files. We'll get this pop-up. We simply click OK and then your game will start to extract. Now, depending on the size of the game and depending on your computer, this can take a couple seconds to a couple minutes. Some of the PS2 games can be quite big in size and can take some time to extract. So you'll have to be a little bit patient here. Once your game is extracted, if we double click to open this up, we will see our Jack and Daxter game here. And if we expand this information view out, we can see it's in a .iso format. 
and that's exactly what we need for the simulator to be able to play ps2 games we're going to need iso or disk image files to be able to load them up once you have your games downloaded and extracted in the correct format what we're going to be doing is coming back to retroarch this time we're going to be clicking on the load content option we're then going to be locating to where we just downloaded our games my iso file is currently here if i select it we will then have the option to select other cores if multiple cores can read this file type or in this case a iso file which i have quite a few others however since we've already selected our ps2 core it should be at the top here so all we need to do is select this again and now our game will start to load up now one nice thing about retro arch is it will keep the aspect ratio of the game we're currently playing so feel free to scale and restretch this window as you would like and just like that you're playing ps2 games on your pc if the game is currently supported in this current early build of the core now if at any point while playing this game you would like to enter your settings all we can do is come up to the command option on the top left you can see we have audio options disk options save state options but if you come down a little bit further we also have a menu toggle if we select this open here we will get a much more expanded list of options or if we come down here a little bit further we can click on the options tab which is going to open up core specific options for our ps2 emulator so here we can play around with a couple of other things there's not a lot here at the moment but i expect in later builds this will be fleshed out a lot more and there'll be a lot more options here to choose from and to pick from to get back out of here we simply click b twice come back to our quick menu and click resume and now our game will start to load up again now you're probably at this point already seeing some graphical glitches on screen this is because again as mentioned it is an early build but surprisingly, it's still relatively playable, even considering some of these weird graphical glitches. Now, one other thing I would recommend doing is connecting up an external controller, especially for dual analog stick games like this. It'll make your experience a lot, lot better. I won't be showing you in today's video how to set up a controller, although I will be leaving a link in the description down below to a previous video where I show you how to set up a controller in RetroArch. It's really easy to do and will make your experience a lot better. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play PlayStation 2 games on your PC. Again, if you're looking for a much better experience, I would recommend PCSX2 and i'll be leaving a link in the description down below to my previous video where i show you how to set that up although it's really cool to see ps2 games are finally playable in retro arch with a dedicated core and hopefully this gets updated in the future i'm really excited to see things like this anyway guys it's as easy as that to play playstation 2 games on your pc if you guys enjoyed this tutorial be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new check out the other videos on the channel i'm going to be leaving a link down below to my paypal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time as always Keep it saucy. Peace.